Hey, what's up everybody? Just wanted to do this video sharing this information for people who may, you know, flip precious metals online. It's going to get a little bit more difficult to make a profit online because there's going to be a lot more taxes involved. It used to be if you sell $20,000 or more, then you would be issued a 1099K. Well, that is going to be changing to $600 profit in one calendar year starting in 2022. So in 2023, you're going to have to report anything you made online over $600 hundred dollars now this is kind of old information that i was not aware of as you can see this is from march 26 2021 and it is now july of 2021 but there was a couple of commenters on my video so i like to thank the people who actually brought this to my attention and i did a little bit of research to find this out but this article comes from cnbc and we are going to take a look at this right now it's going to become harder to avoid telling the irs about income from selling stuff online here's what to know effective next year sellers on certain online platforms like etsy and ebay will receive a 1099k if their sales are at least 600 dollars down from the current threshold of twenty thousand dollars with a minimum of 200 transactions not all online sales are taxable, whether you receive a tax form or not. Here's when and how you should be reporting that income to the IRS. All the money you make selling stuff online, don't overlook the tax man. Never overlook the tax man. Depending on your situation, it's possible that you're generating income that the IRS wants to know about. And if you're an ongoing seller, be aware that it could become harder after this year to avoid income reporting requirements. While the tax laws applying to such transactions haven't changed, it just has become more visible, says Carrie Weston, Director of Tax Practices and Ethics with the American Institute of CPAs. Under current rules, individuals who sell goods or services via platforms like Uber, eBay, Etsy, and others that use third-party transaction network, example PayPal, generally only receive a tax form if they engage in at least 200 transactions worth an aggregate $20,000 or more. Dollars. That form is called a 1099K, also goes to the IRS. Starting next year, the federal threshold for issuing a 1099K will drop to $600 with no minimum transaction level due to a provision in the recently enacted American Rescue Plan Act. Please don't rescue me. I don't think anybody needs this kind of rescuing by losing more money. Some states already have lower minimums. This means that in early 2023, you could receive a 1099K for online sales you make in 2022. And this would be the case whether you're an occasional seller or operating as a business. As long as you sold more than $600 worth on a single platform it doesn't necessarily mean you'd be taxed on the money but you would need to account for on your tax returns what consumers sell online clothing 52 percent shoes 31 percent furniture 31 percent jewelry and a set or accessories 27 percent home decor 24 percent toys 20 percent i don't see anything on here about precious metals and it probably is below that 14 percent threshold or falls in that other of 14 percent threshold but ebay is among the platforms that would be affected by the new reporting rule and the company is working with lawmakers to address any issues it may cause ebay believes in 
following the law and proper tax accounting, said an eBay spokesman. Setting confusing 1099 case to nearly every occasional or casual seller that uses an online platform to earn extra income, however, is not the right approach. Additionally, in order to issue a 1099-K, a social security number is required, which makes some of the affected companies worry that requirement would be a turnoff to sellers, said Garrett Watts, a senior policy analyst at the Tax Foundation. Not all these platforms routinely collect that information. However, because of the current high threshold applied to the 1099-K, even sellers who have a clear profit motive may not receive a form, meaning neither does the IRS, which can lead into underreporting of income. A good share of folks on these platforms may not be reporting the income. The IRS isn't getting that information either, Watson said. At the last count, the tax gap, the difference between what taxpayers owe and what they pay is an estimated 381 billion per year according to the 2009 irs report that examined data for 2011 12 and 13. regardless of whether you receive a tax form there is an instance when the income you earn from your online sales should be reported to the irs here's what to know about tax rules that apply What's taxable? If your sales are aching to have a garage sale, i.e. you unload belongings for less than what you originally paid, there's typically no reason to report what you pulled in, said Watson at the American Institute of CPAs. Essentially, there's no income to report. Of those who have sold pre-owned goods on eBay, for instance, 85% plucked items for their, from their house, Things are already owned and no longer used, according to recent reports from eBay. Otherwise, taxation depends on the situation. Generally speaking, if you're selling to make a profit for reasons that go beyond nurturing a hobby, you probably would be considered a business owner for tax purposes. For instance, if you regularly buy clothes at yard sales or other discounted bots that then sell them, whether online or not, with a intent of making a profit, that counts. The good news is that a business owner can subtract the resulting losses from other income you report on your tax returns, Watson said. The IRS expects to hear from anyone whose netting earnings from self-employment are $400 or more. And although you would be required to pay self-employment taxes on 15.3%, you can deduct half the amount elsewhere on your return. The IRS also wants to hear about income you generate from a hobby. Unlike with business losses, though, taxpayers can generally only deduct applicable expenses up to the amount of a hobby income. In other words, the excess, the loss, cannot be deducted from other income. However, because it's a hobby and not a business, you don't have to pay self employment tax on income, Weston said. Figuring out whether you are selling as a hobby or a business can sometimes be tricky. The IRS has some tips on its website. Oh, lovely. Intended to help taxpayers make a determination. Meanwhile, sometimes a belonging is more valuable when you sell it than when you acquired it. Whether via a purchase or gift, your profit generally would be the difference between your cost basis, its value when it came into your possession and what you sell it for. In these one-off cases, the profit would get treated as a capital gain. Generally, that means it's either taxed as ordinary income if you held the asset, the item, for less than one year, or else it's considered a long-term gain with a tax rate of 0%, 15% or 20% depending on your overall income. However, there are exceptions to those rates, including the 28% that gets applied to the gains from the sale of things like fine arts, collectibles, antiques, stamps, coins, and some jewelry, Weston 
said. So look at that. 28% that gets applied to gains from sales of things like collectibles, stamps, coins. Does anybody watching this video go on eBay to sell any of those things? So you get that 28% coins. Interesting. So looks like there's going to be a whole lot of more taxes and um, so for people who buy stuff, say, from the United States Mint that then turn around and resell on eBay and are making over $600 for the entire calendar year, which is very easy to do, it seems like the tax man is coming for you. Now, with that being said, not that any income shouldn't have been reported anyhow, I just had to throw that out there. But now eBay, it looks like, is going to be letting the IRS know that you have made more than $600. And if you don't report it and you get audited, well, let's say you don't want to be in that situation. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I appreciate everybody for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll talk to everybody on my next video. Thanks a lot, everyone.